Hello, Confirmation students and parents. Welcome to this first uh, at-home learning session that we are doing with Confirmation for this 2021-22 Confirmation year. It is good to see you and glad that you have successfully found this video. And uh, that will be about 10 minutes long. And then we have a few questions at the end to answer and uh, hope that you will have a fruitful night with uh, your adults. Our seventh graders are going to be kind of the teachers and tell you a little bit of what they've learned this year. And uh, then we have a faith five practice for you to do at the end. I just want to say one thing, though. It is a joy to be uh, teaching your seventh grade uh, students. Uh, they are a wonderful class. They are very engaged. They ask questions uh, and they're very polite. And I give thanks for each one of them in class as we learn uh, in confirmation this year. So tonight um, we are going to be talking about worship. And it is our unit that we are in right now. And in fact, we will be planning worship uh, the next time we are together in class. And that will be December the 12th that we will be sharing then uh, our worship service uh, in person and also some virtual parts as well. But worship is what we're talking about. And uh, to make up worship, there are uh, a number of parts that make up worship. And your students should know the number of parts. And we also have some uh, actions in which to do that. And in fact, I'm going to use one of those actions to help them if they are not remembering what they are. So hit pause for a moment and your student can tell you what the parts of worship are and also what the actions that go along with it. Welcome back. I hope that your student was able to tell you that we have four parts to worship. The first part is the gathering. Then we have the word. Whoop. And then we have the meal. And then after that, we have the sending or we are sent out into uh, into the world. And so that's what our worship does. Those four parts are in every worship service. And tonight we're going to be focusing on the second part, which is word and why it is important to us and important to worship. Of those four parts, that's what makes a liturgy for worship. So any Sunday or any worship service we have, it will have those parts in worship. And so all of the other things that come under those subheadings may be switched around. They may come in different order, but nonetheless, we will have it. And that is called uh, the word liturgy. Now, that's kind of a long word and a formal word to talk about worship. But a liturgy, uh, it actually means the work of people or the work of the people. And so it is uh, our work in worship in which we hear God's word and we respond. And it is our time in which we worship uh, God in our time together. So um, there are a number of parts in this word uh, section. And I'm going to put them right here. Hopefully you can see that and read that well. Uh, these are the many parts. There are 10 parts that go to our worship. Uh, and, and word section and unit to worship. And the first one is a children's message. Now, during pandemic, we haven't been doing that very much, uh, if at all. I can't wait to reintroduce that back into worship because that is so much fun. If you watch a children's message, that usually summarizes what the message will be or the sermon, uh, or it will be the kickoff to what the sermon is about when I use a children's message. So that's just a little hint in worship as you see a children's message. Sometimes it's before the lessons, sometimes it's during or somewhere in between the lessons. And so um, that's where the children's message comes. The first lesson is the Old Testament reading. Somewhere from the Old Testament, we have a reading on most, uh, on any given Sunday. Um, that is a, a word in which it reminds us of how God uh, has chosen Israel and how God interacts with the people of Israel, whether that be good or bad, the people of Israel. Uh, that's what the story generally is. 
So that is God speaking, and then we have a response to that. We respond with the word, uh, or with the psalm, the reading of the psalm. There are 150 of them in our Bible. And they relate to just about every human situation you can think of. And so we respond to God with the singing or the reading of a psalm. And then that leads us to the second lesson. That is the New Testament reading or sometimes called an epistle. Again, epistle is a word that means letter. A letter that someone has written, like Paul, to one of the congregations or churches of the day uh, after Jesus that he would have written to, or maybe John or some of the other um, disciples or apostles that would write letters. So after we have heard the Old Testament, we respond with the psalm, we hear the New Testament, and then we respond with a gospel acclamation. Generally, it's words here, but sometimes it can be sung. Uh, it's words of alleluia and giving thanks and praise to God as we are giving thanks for God's presence in our lives, but also to get ready for the reading of the gospel. Now, when we read the gospel, we read it in uh, such a way that we stand and we listen to the gospel. And as we listen to the gospel, we want to give reverence to those, these words that are going to be spoken. We stand uh, for many times to revere people like maybe a judge coming into the courtroom, all arise, and then we stand up. Or maybe we stand up for when a bride is coming down the aisle, the important person uh, in that. Um, or there are other times that we will stand in reverence. So as we stand for the reading of the gospel, we are standing for Jesus and his word because of the four gospels, the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Of those four books, they're all about Jesus' life, his birth, his teaching, his suffering on the cross, his resurrection. Uh, they encapsulate the days when Jesus is there. The Old Testament are leading up to Jesus coming, and the letters are the epistles and the books after the four Gospels uh, reflect the time after Jesus has died. So these four books are very important for us because Jesus' teaching is important to us. So after the reading of the Gospel is done, that is the time for the sermon, or, or it is a time for the message, or even in some cases it might even be called a homily when it's shortened. We listen to that word. How is it important to us? How does it relate to us today? Scriptures were written thousands of years ago. Jesus spoke the words of who God was and what it means to follow God or to follow Jesus. And so we need to apply how it matters to us today. And so when Pastor Dara or myself, when we preach, we try to make that uh, useful for each of us so that when we are sent out in the end of our worship, we can apply that in our lives and to this world that needs to hear this message. After we share the sermon, then is the sermon song or the hymn of the day. Uh, the hymn of the day usually summarizes what the sermon was about or what the reading of the gospel was. And so it's a very important song for us to sing and uh, can also help you to remember what was just shared in the sermon as well. Once we have responded with that singing, then we share our statement of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Uh, we also might call it the Nicene Creed or the Athanasian. Those are three different creeds that we have, but a creed is a statement of faith. And when we do the Apostles' Creed, which we share most of the time, the Apostles' Creed has three I believe statements. I believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the three in one. And so we share that and that we believe in this God who relates to us in those ways and in which God loves us through, uh, through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we give thanks for those relational terms of who God is and how God blesses us. And then after we have shared our uh, belief, we then share in the prayers of the day or the prayers of intercession. Now, those prayers are important because intercession means uh, to, uh, to, to pray on behalf of others. 
So what is it that we pray? What is it that people need uh, that we pray for? What does this world need? So sometimes it's about difficult and hard things in life when people get sick or ill or die, but they also can be about celebrations too. The things we give thanks for and how God blesses us as well. So our prayers are lifted to God. So that's a little bit about what the word is. Um, You're going to take a few minutes now to answer some questions, but also wanted to share in this word section. The most important part is not the sermon that is preached, although we take a lot of interest in it and we spend a lot of time doing it. But actually the most important part of this word section is the reading of the gospel because it focuses on Jesus and his love for us. And so that is what we kind of get ready for, and then the rest of the service helps to send us out so that we can share that word with other people. Uh, Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, You have a few questions to answer in the rest of your worksheet, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday when we will share our time in planning a worship service from all of the things we have learned, and I look forward to seeing you in a week's time. In the meanwhile, God bless, and we'll see you soon.